glory to God. Just tell somebody on your left and the right that they are looking wonderful this morning. Amen. <laughs> Wonderfully and fearfully made in the image of God. Amen. Hallelujah. On behalf of Pastor, I just want to thank uh, the Bread of Life leadership and uh, all the members, the visitors, for being here today. I believe this is a day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's see who was visiting on this side and this side, who are visiting for the first time. Hallelujah. Amen. Any one of you can come and get one of his. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's nice to visit, amen. amen. <laughs> so next Sunday we expect him to bring five more people. In Jesus' name. Thank you. This morning I want to share a message that I've entitled coming out of your pit. Hallelujah. Amen. Coming out of your pit. Coming out of your pit. Say, I'm coming out of my pit. I'm coming out of my pit. Let's just turn our Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 37. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 37. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. Before that, there is nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And we'll read from verse 1 up to verse 11. The Bible reads, Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed in the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flock with his brothers, the son of Beha and the sons of Zippah his father's wives, and they brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel, Jacob, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made a, a rich ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that his father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen, this dream I had, we were binding shapes of corn out in the field when suddenly my chef rose and stood upright. While your shelves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he said he had another dream and he told them it was to his brother. Listen, he said, I had another dream and this time the sun and the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept it to mind. Amen? Amen. His father kept it to mind. As I said this morning, I want to share something that I've entitled, Coming Out of Your Pit. When we look at this account of Joseph, we see how hatred starts in families. Amen? We see how hatred starts, even just amongst people. He 
here we see that the reason the brothers hated Joseph was because they identified that Joseph had a gift. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a gift upon Joseph's life. There was a gift to dream. Hallelujah. Amen. And I pray that today we should see young men start dreaming. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The young men should start seeing visions. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The old men should dream in the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Most of the times when you have a gift, you face opposition. Amen. Amen. And this opposition that you face is actually a sign that God has a destiny for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When there is no opposition, just know there is no, no vision. Hallelujah. Amen. Just know there is no gift upon your life. When you are facing opposition, be it at your workplace, be it here at church, be it in the, ch in the, in the church choir, be it in leadership, just know there is a gift upon my life Amen. and count it all joy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You should count it all joy. Hallelujah. Now, let's just see from, say, verse 20, 22, same chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to share something before I read that. Hallelujah. Amen. When Joseph had actually shared to his brothers that he had this dream, two dreams actually, head started building up and they even called him dreamer. Amen. There was a time when Joseph went to look for his brothers in the fields. And he came to his brothers. He found them. One of them said, there comes a dreamer. Hallelujah. How many times have you been in a situation where you know that I am right here? I have this gift. I have this thing, this message that I have to deliver. But you face opposition. People call you names. Hallelujah. People call you funny things because of the way you look or because of the gift that is upon your life. That was the case with Joseph. Then we see now because these brothers were so much in anger, so much in rage, so much hurt had built in their hearts, they planned to kill Joseph. Hallelujah. But one of the brothers, Reuben, had a heart. He wanted Joseph to be spared because after all, it was their brother. Hallelujah. Joseph was thrown in a pit. Hallelujah. He was thrown in a pit. And that's where my message is coming from, that you are coming out of your pit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are coming out of your pit. A pit is a place in our modern times where we dig to throw what we don't need. Hallelujah. So in other words, when Joseph's brothers decided to throw him in a pit, they were saying, you are not needed. You are garbage. Hallelujah. Because a pit is a place we throw garbage. Hallelujah. But there's something there. A pit is a place you find yourself lost. Hallelujah. A pit could be a place that could cause pain to your life. Most of the times when we are in that pit, it's like there is no hope. We don't even wants to maybe read the word of God. But I have news for you. Jesus will take you out of your pit this morning. Jesus will take you out of your pit this morning. A pit is a place that is neglected. A pit is a place of sorrow. A 
pit is a place of darkness. Imagine what was going through Joseph's mind when he was thrown. Most of the times we find ourselves in a pit. It might be a pit of rejection where everyone has rejected you because they have seen something about your life. People that you love, people that you trust. That's why the Bible says only Jesus sticks closer than a brother. Amen. Because sometimes our own families who bruise us. Hallelujah. Sometimes our own best friends who actually hate us. Then we are in that pit of rejection where we don't know where to go. We feel unwanted. Just know there is a seed inside you. Sometimes we are in a pit of mourning. When we lose our loved ones, we don't know what to do. Some have lost fathers. Some have lost mothers. Some have lost brothers, uncles. And during that time when you lose somebody, you don't really know where to turn to. Amen? Amen. That can be a pit. Sometimes a pit could be a place of loneliness. Imagine what Joseph was going through that time. He was under there, thinking, if they leave me here, I'll just die alone. Loneliness can be a pit. Sometimes a pit can be a place of burial. A place of barrenness, where whatever you do, seems like nothing is really happening in terms of you seeing the results that you desire. Barrenness can also be stagnation. Amen? Where you're seeing your friends are moving up, your friends are being promoted, but you are still stagnant. That can be your pit. But today, God will take you out of your pit in the mighty name of Jesus. You're coming out of your pit in Jesus' name. Sometimes your pit may be a time of grieving. Some people, it takes them a long time to overcome that period of grieving when they lose somebody. Sometimes your pit can be a place of sickness. A place where one sickness after another just seems to be following you. But we thank God that we have an answer because he was bruised so that you can have the healing that you deserve. You coming out of the pit of sickness in the name of Jesus. Amen.